What's up? I'm Jardy Santiago. I'm a house dancer coming out of San Jose, California. I've been dancing for about like pretty much 20 years and uh, I started out as a b-boy back when I was um, about 14 or 15. Around the time pretty much everybody, everybody around me was dancing. It was kind of like the, the boom of Bay Area, get back into b-boying kind of thing, you know? So, and um, that was around, for me, that was around the 90s, early 90s. So I started b-boying around that time. And I learned, I learned b-boying mostly through videos. With every dance style that uh, I've done, I'm primarily self-taught. So, you know, when, uh, when I started doing hip hop, how I started that was um, one day I was just watching TV and I was just bored. Uh, you know, I didn't have anything to do really. So, you know, like, um, I don't know what it was, but something hit me, you know. Something hit me like, man, I want to dance. You know, this was coming from uh, being, being a b-boy where I had no, I had no idea how to dance that kind of hip hop, but I wanted to do it anyway. So I got up, went to the back and looked at my sliding, sliding door, you know, and just started practicing. And I ended up practicing for three hours that night, just randomly. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I knew the feel of what I was seeing, you know. So I started imitating that feel and I started just throwing in any moves that I thought I knew. And that's kind of, that's kind of like, how I got started and um, actually shortly after I started dancing hip-hop I got into a sort of an accident where I ruptured my eardrum and after that I lost my ability to b-boy because for some reason I, I lost all my ability to balance myself and do spins so after that I started relying way more on my hip-hop dancing than b-boying and eventually I just had to quit b-boying you know that was the start of me being a being a hip hop dancer so after hip hop dancing for several years um, I got into this group called Mystic Disciples and pretty much that's where I uh, began to see choreography basically you know then uh, the choreography wasn't as intricate as the choreography now it was actually very simple but Still, that got me into the mentality of like uh, learning other people's moves and doing it with them. That's when I started seeing a lot of the people in the choreography scene that you would actually call big names today. And then uh, around the time I was seeing like Mind Tricks, Kaboom Squad. Kaboom Squad actually brought out a lot of talented choreographers uh, like Phil. Uh, Phil and Joe from uh, Jabberwockies and also a lot of Mind Tricks members ended up in Jabberwockies as well. I got into house dancing around 2000-2001 when I joined this group called Soul Sector. Soul Sector is actually, I got into the group because of uh, my basically like hip-hop 90s influence and that's pretty much what Soul Sector was. It was a bunch of guys that was uh, that were dancing hip-hop 90s freestyle style that was uh, the influence of that style came pretty much from New York. House dance is also a New York style. So uh, because I did b-boying, which is a New York style, I did hip hop that came from New York. Um, it was uh, an easy gateway for me to get into house because I kind of already, you know, on a superficial level, understood kind of the New York mentality, even without being there, because I've watched so many like New Yorkers dance and learn from uh, so many of them. So, yeah, that's how I got into house dance. Uh, that led me, I guess, to dancing for many years doing house and eventually doing uh, what uh, I became more known for, which, which was uh, making house dance tutorials on, um, on YouTube. See, that's why everybody looked familiar, and I'm not even <laughs> exaggerating. I'm like, shit. I'm, you know, sometimes I feel like I should know everybody's names already because I already know your faces and stuff. <laughs> oh, man. The dance scene. <laughs> man, memories are coming back. When I started out as a b-boy, the dance scene was, you know, 
not like today where you know it's competitive today but back then there was a certain like competitive edge about it where you know people were not afraid to say stuff to your face and just talk smack you know what I mean I guess it, it, it roots from uh, the early 80s where where in b-boying you know it's like somebody could call you a biter right in front of your face you know um, that was still going on when um, I started dancing when I started b-boying in the early 90s uh, a couple of stories actually I had this one group that would come over to my house and harass me it got to the point where I actually wanted to take out a knife and start stabbing people it was crazy like like they actually were like they wanted to fight they wanted to battle they wanted to talk crap and uh, actually this is another story but one of those guys that wanted to uh, like start trouble with me at first ended up becoming uh, one of my best friends and good partners in dance uh, his name is uh, Cheng and he actually yeah it's funny because you know dance could turn enemies into friends too as well at first though it's like we wanted to like I wanted to punch this guy in the face it was so crazy you know what I mean it's like a lot of uh, teenage testosterone was like in the air or something where you just wanted um, you wanted to compete you wanted to talk crap as a b-boy I went into uh, a practice one time and I did this move that I got from Beat Street right and one of the members over there started one of the guys started calling me a biter it's like hey that's my move it's like dude I got I got that move out of a movie. It's like just because you do it doesn't mean I bid it from you. You know what I mean? It's like that's crazy because it was also a very very uh, common move. Like I still don't get I, I still don't get why he said that till this day. But it kind of shows you how how far people would go to kind of make you feel bad back then. You know, people don't do that nowadays. I think you know people are a lot more passive passive aggressive nowadays. You know like they'll kind of put up a status update on facebook and say like yeah you know what you ain't all that but it doesn't really you don't really know who they're talking about you know what i mean it's kind of like who's this person talking to you know it's kind of you don't know who, who they're talking to back then it was it wasn't like that if somebody wanted to tell you that you ain't all that they'll tell it to your face you know and from that b-boy background when i started uh getting into hip-hop dance it was the same thing but I did see a lot of evidence of that when it came to the battles and then battles people started pushing and shoving like people really wanted to fight each other back in the day when it came to battling now you don't see that anymore because battles are like you know they they organize them but back then it's like if you wanted to get in somebody's face and start dancing against them that's what you did you you find them you get them in a club you just go after them you know what I mean you start you start dancing against them. Back then, uh, a lot of the shows were underground. It wasn't organized and uh, backed up by like corporations today. Like you know, nowadays you get you can get you know uh, people to like benefactors to kind of uh, sponsor your shows. But back in the day, like it had to come out of your own pocket. You had to get like a community center. You just had to advertise it under it with your own money, pretty much. <clears throat> and shows back then they were man so you know back then that was like my youth you know that's that's when I was younger so that was like the that was the point in time for me when it was the most exciting and everything I saw was new and it was like holy crap dance this dance that dance is so great like you know I was in a, a veteran kind of like in the game I don't feel like that anymore you know I kind of like I'm kind of I wouldn't say I'm jaded but I'm kind of more experienced where you know it's like not many things phase me anymore it's like oh yeah that's cool you know that's it's cool dancing you know but back then you know um, shows were it was crazy nowadays what I feel about the dance scene it, it definitely has changed but you know I, I kind of I like to progress you know I'm one of those people that like to grow I don't hold on to the past you know I don't wish I don't wish for the 90s to be back you know what I mean I'm not one of those people I mean you know look at my clothes you know I'm not wearing stuff that I was wearing in high school you know you know how kind of adults turn into that they they, they they never progress past what they're wearing in high school you know it's like you know you got your dad jeans and I like every aspect of style in the world to progress and then uh, I either go along with it 
or I don't, but I like to, to see it change, you know? If everything stayed the same since the 90s, I think it'd be a very, very boring place. I appreciate what now has to offer because it's very different from what we had back then. And <clears throat> I can see what's good about it, you know? I don't, I don't pass judgment on it as in like, I'm old, I don't get this, so I don't like it, you know what I mean? I, you know, because I've stu stuck in there and, um, and have stayed with the dance scene and have remained friends with uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the people who do this dance, I feel what's going on, you know? It's like, yeah, I, c I, could, see, I could see what's good about it and I'm, I like it, you know? I, I like it and um, there's actually, uh, the stuff that happens nowadays influences my dance too. You know, it may not show in a very overt way. Everything affects the way who I am. So the difference between dance and choreography, and um, there's no simple way to answer that. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to say that there's no difference between dance and choreography because, you know, Choreography is pretty much the choreographer's dance that other people learn, you know? But the thing with that is when other people learn it, do they feel the same way as the choreographer? You know what I mean? Does the same feeling come out of that person that, um, you know, uh, is the feeling the same as when the choreographer first made, you know, first made that, that piece? So not everybody, not everybody projects the same feeling when it comes to dance. So there's bound to be like, you know, a person here and there that looks like they're doing what the choreo choreographer is doing, but they're not dancing it out in the same way and they're not putting out the same feeling, you know? Moving around is uh, kind of like a loose way to say like that person is dancing. Like if a person is moving around doing dance moves, okay, they're dancing. But I feel like true dancing comes from the heart. And if you, if uh, you know, if you really want to dance uh, to its full capabilities, you have to let your soul also show itself in your dance. And I feel like a lot of choreographers do that. I, I do feel that some people miss out on that as well, because not everybody's gone through the same trials and tribula tribulations in their lives. And some people don't have really uh, anything to like take inspiration from, like. Where have I ever had trouble in my life to be able to make a piece that's sad, you know what I mean? So if somebody made something that was sad and there's a person that's always happy, they're not dancing it to the same intensity as the original person who was sad was doing it, you know? So, you know, I just like to say to shorten it, to shorten it for everybody that um, when it comes to dancing, it's the individual that turns it into a dance, not the style, you know? So I can't say there's, you know, a difference between dance and choreography. I can't say there's no difference. It has to depend on the individual, the individual's way of doing it. And it has to be the individual, individual that dances. I had no money, that's when I found I needed a uh, I've never actually, um, had a goal ever with dance. Dance is just something I, I just naturally do. You know, back in the day, I never even knew that girls like dancing. So I didn't start out because I knew girls would like me. I just started dancing because it was kind of like, it was in my environment and I got hooked into it. And it was something I did. I didn't, I, it wasn't until I was like, eight years into dancing that when I realized like, oh shoot, some girls like this stuff, why? You know what I mean? I was really kind of naive about that. So, you know, it, it, dancing is just something I do. It's just, um, what keeps me going always changes, you know? I mean, um, before it was just because everybody was doing it. And then other people start motivating me to keep doing it because they wanted me to keep dancing for the sake of their group. And, uh, you know, it's a sense of responsibility that keeps me dancing. When other people rely on me, it makes me keep going, you know? Because I don't, 
you know, I like, I dance, I dance pretty much for myself. And if I don't feel like dancing, I'm not gonna dance, you know? Uh, nothing really is forcing me to dance. So what motivates me is really the people. What motivates me for uh, to make to make videos and keep dancing? It's really the people, you know. I do do it. I do do it for myself. But for me to dance for myself, all I have to do is like put on some music and dance in the kitchen. I don't necessarily have to have anybody seeing what I do. You know what I mean? I'm a very kind of like private person, and I don't have to see. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not out for fame or anything. So when people want me to do something. And they really show that, you know, like it's if it's really like genuine and heartfelt that they want me to do what I do and that it inspires them, that, you know, that motivates me. That keeps me going. And that's pretty much all I'm running on. Because I'm not trying to get on TV. I'm not trying to do this to get known around the world, you know. It's, it's all that is, you know, it's like, it's not like, it's not really because I've grown past that. It's never been in my goals. I've never had a goal. I've never, yeah, there's been no goals with me with dance. It's just like, something has to just keep me going. And for right now, it's people. It's the people that keep me going with dance. Well, my advice for, for new dancers is find out what you love about it and go off of that, you know? Because there's no use in just doing it just because. Like if you don't like dancing, then don't do it. You know what I mean? Don't do it because your friends are doing it. Everybody has a purpose in life and you have to find that purpose. If it's if you really feel like it's dancing, then then keep going. You know what I mean? But if you don't if you feel like it, you're kinda like half-assing everything and you don't really care about it, then you know like you better find what it is that you were made for. Because everybody was made to be special in this world, you know? And I think everybody needs to find their purpose. And you know, dancing may not be for everybody. But if you really feel like you're the one when it comes to dance, you gotta just you gotta just go off of that. It's a feeling you get inside. You know, you can't it's you can't really describe it. That's that's my only that's my only advice. You know, if you were made for it, you're gonna keep doing it regardless. Final words. Um, have much you know uh, I think I think uh, for final words I just uh, I just hope everybody gets inspired and uh, keeps doing what they do because I feel like art really does make the world go round just uh, keep striving to do your best and that's pretty much that's pretty much what we do in life right but follow your heart dear.